Hello everybody, back here again for our vlog of day, and today is Tuesday the 19th, and today was a lovely day to be alive. Got up this morning fairly early-ish, um, got up, got the dogs out, um, had the one dog that didn't want to go out right away, so I left him, left her inside in the bedroom, my wife, got the rest of the dogs out, um, got everybody cared for real quick, was able to jump in the hot tub for a few minutes. And then I got a text saying they were on their way to drop off the dog, which I thought was going to be later, but it turned out to be a little earlier, which worked out just fine. Uh, met them, got the dog in the house, got introduced to everybody, got the other dog that didn't want to go out. out. Um, got everybody fed as best I could. The um, Doberman's got some separation anxiety. Um, not sleeping through the night real well either. Kind of giving me less sleep than I really would like to have. But um, she's not eating very good either, which I think part of it's the fact that they make that dog like the center of their life. Like everything relies rests around that dog. Like even their van is set up like the back seat and the very the third row seats where the kids sit, and the dog has the full middle of the van, and then the parents are up front. It's kind of funny. So it's just kind of a setup. The dog there's way more stuff in there for the dog than that people have, and it's all about like the dog's got a schedule. The dog's supposed to go for a run at this time and do this at this time, and all this stuff. Like this very detailed regiment, you know, gets treats at this time, and I'm like. Yeah, whatever. Or that's not how life goes, but it is what it is. So, but went ahead. Uh, dog ate some. It's still poop, and that's the big thing. I'm more concerned about if the dog isn't eating enough to even poop, then it makes me more nervous. But it's only here for a few days, so not a problem. So, went ahead, got that taken care of. Um, from there, I was just kind of hanging around the dogs. Everybody's chilling out. Um, went ahead and had to run up to feed the cat. So I got the one dog dropped off. Ran up and fed the cat. And that process of feeding the cat. Um, also had to go pick up another dog after that that the client wanted supposed to drop off like tomorrow evening but wanted to drop off this morning instead which i'm like okay but he wanted to leave like really early he's driving to new jersey so i kind of understand his anxiety he's an older man that wants to make sure he has enough time to get up there kind of thing he's got an appointment to meet with some people and stuff more than he's also i guess ordered a new car up there so i went there to pick it up as well so um wanting himself time to stop and hit hotels and rest more if he doesn't you know drive as far as he thinks he used to drive when he was younger so went ahead and i said well the time frame i'm not exactly sure when we get back from feeding the cat and that and get back here and then he's got to turn around and drive all the way back up north which i can save him like probably 40 minutes and probably in the process i said why don't i just pick the dog up at your place because it's like around the corner from where the cat is like legitimately like it's less than a half mile from where the cat's going to be so i'm like hey that works for me so i'll just go ahead and say hold it and get that done so went over there reached out to him told him i was on the way got the cat cared for they're putting on all new wiring they're running like cat five or like fiber optic but fiber optic in our neighborhood so i had to kind of shimmy around all the workers and stuff out there doing that line and then got the cats fed winter picked the dog up came back to the house you know, I've watched the dog before. It's just a sweet little poodle, little tiny poodle. And it is obsessed with my mother. Like, absolutely just wants to be on her lap 24-7. And, and my mom goes to the laundry room. The dog sits outside the laundry room the door. My mom goes in her bedroom for a minute. She sits outside the door. My mom goes to the bathroom, sits outside the door. She's like, the dog wants nothing to do with really anybody else or any other dogs. Wants to be with my mom 24-7. It's so cute. So, got that done. Um, got the dog out. Made sure a potty and stuff and whatnot. Got all um, his stuff put away and whatnot need to be done then hung around for the day for a little bit had a couple things going on and then um finally found i got some extent emergency brake cable extender connectors whatever you want to call it that needs to be installed on my suburban and uh, reached out to the company and um that i ordered them from and they basically were little to no help and they said they're going to forward the information over to the company who manufactures the product and there's the salesman and like a distributor, I guess, best way to put it. So I didn't think the person understood what I was saying, truly. Then she had to condense it down into an email form. And I thought, well, that's even worse. So I went ahead and just called the company directly. I looked them up, found them online. Way more helpful, way more friendly. Great conversation, told me exactly what I needed. And they were like, cool. She couldn't even tell if that part was supposed to be in my kit or not. So. She wasn't sure if it was even in the kit and whatnot. I said, if, it's, if I can find it locally here and it's a few bucks, I'll happily just go buy it. I just need you to tell me what part it is that I need to go get because I called a bunch of shops around here and they don't know what seemed to the hell I'm talking about. So, and nobody anymore seems to have any knowledge of car stuff. They're just, they get employees that 
I can punch numbers into the computer and I can speak to people and that's it. They're not car people. I don't, I, if I found like an old shop that had old like car guys and mechanic guys that still work there, like are too old to turn wrenches anymore, but now are working here, I would happily pay 50% more for my parts, like without a problem at all, but it does not happen. So went around, said hell that stuff, da da da, this is not really, not good. So they told me that they were going to get a hold of their supervisor and find out and they were going to call me back and they got all my information. Never heard from her at all. It's like, oh, you sons of bitches. But at least I got, she told me the name that she thought it was called or what they called it there again. So I used that to call the parts store and they're like, oh, I need to you know, like make a model. And I'm like, well, I tell you the making models 1967 Suburban, but the brakes are brand new. A kit that's made for the, like it's just a custom kit. There's nothing, there's no part number to get here. So that guy finally found something that would work. I actually had a little bit of knowledge and I was able to find something back. I just made up a name of a vehicle. I'm like in day eight, I'm like, try this. And he's like, yeah. So he basically described what he had. And I said, absolutely, that should work. I said, I'll get up later to pick it up. He goes, I'll set them out for you. And I said, okay, cool. So I went up there and then it was about midday. I thought, well, I got time because then I'm going to pick the dog up until later. I'll go get that done. And so I went and basically picked up the parts. I also had to go do a couple of running errands I had to do. Picked up the parts I got, um, ran up to get a couple of other things done. And then coming back, I swung by the mechanic shop. I actually went up north to, that, to do a couple things up in New Smyrna. Coming back down and I basically, as I stopped in the mechanic shop, checked on it and they don't fit. The brake cable I have is too big for the extenders. Although the extender is long enough. So what I'm going to do, I just told the guys to take that cable off. The, I didn't use the emergency brake before. Don't care. Take it off. I'll worry about it later. Just get my truck done. You know, I just want my truck done. Get my truck done. I'll fix it. I'll hook the emergency brake up myself. Put those cables that go from that caliper to the frame rail supposed to connect. We'll put them back in the box and I'll do it later. I'll actually order the part or just go make it. So hey, make it pretty easily, which is a piece of pipe and I'll just dremel it out, cut it out the exact size I want. So I make my own extender because the one that I even had there would have worked, but it's going to be too, a little too short, I think. So the other option is I'll just order from the company that makes the brick kit, whoever makes that cable. Say, hey, I need a cable that's three inches longer or five inches longer, truthfully, because that point's locked off. It don't matter. So I got to move a bracket anyway, because where the bracket sits with this cable, it doesn't work. So I got to drill out the bracket, take the rivet out. And I think there's already a hole in my frame. I can reinstall it in that I believe will work, but I wasn't really in the mood to spend a lot of time because I didn't have time. I'm like, I'm dropping these parts off. I get the hell out of here because I got somebody to come pick up their dog. And then of course I get stuck. Because he called, said, I'm on my way to pick up the dog. I'm like, oh shit, you're coming too early. So I got stuck by the train. I'm like, wait for that. I'm like, holy crap. So I head down and I text the guy. I'm like, hey, I'm on a pine tree. I'll be there. If I'm not there in time, my mom can give you back the dog. But it's easier on there. So as I was going down pine tree, I think he pulled over knowing that I was running behind. So he pulled over and sent me a text. And then I passed him when he pulled over. So we got there. He pulled in behind me. We chatted for a couple minutes. Get the dog back. Everything's good to go. They're super cool people. They're, they understand like that whole, you know, exact time frame is not a big deal for them. So went ahead, got the dog back. We chatted a little bit and then I got in, played the dog some. Everybody was cool. Went and got my run in, got back from my run and I topped my uh, mileage needed for the year for the marathon per week. So basically I ran 52 marathons already this week or this year, um, averaging 26.2 miles per week, which is great. So I end up with enough miles. I end up like two miles over. So I've got it the rest of the year. I just keep my run streak alive. And then I've already got my goal number hit. So it made me feel really good about that. Although it was kind of cold and dreary, kind of crappy out, but I got back, got warmed up, got myself a shower, got cleaned up and that. Wife got home from work and we ended up having uh, sandwiches. Mom made up some sandwiches and stuff, which we knocked it out for dinner. Got the dogs all fed again. Everybody was chill. Everybody was cool. Everybody's getting along really, really good. Including the little poodle. The little poodle ate like a demon, man. He was hungry. He got his food, ate good. Thurman barely ate at all. And it is what it is. So, but yeah, overall, real good. Uh, dogs all getting along good. Uh, went ahead and grabbed one of my... Oh, my wife had went to Walmart after she had a doctor appointment. The there she stopped by Walmart. And I assume trying to buy stuff for my birthday tomorrow is what she was doing. But who knows? So... She stopped in there. I went out there to help her carry stuff in, not knowing soon she went to Walmart. And she goes, well, everything, I, everything else in the car, I don't want you to see. And I'm like, God damn it. I didn't want any gifts. I didn't want this shit. Like, whatever. So went ahead and said to heck with it. And then I um, got back in there. And then she kept asking me, I'm going outside. It's too cold to go outside. It was cold. And I'm like, I'm just going to stay in here now because she knew she wanted to bring the stuff into the car. 
And I assume wrap it up, whatever. And I'm like, no, I'm just going to stay in here. I don't need it. She's like, we're going to be able to have your cigar inside. And I'm like, yeah, I know, but I'm just not going to have a cigar tonight. I'm just going to skip it. Just so you can't bring your stuff in. And she's like, just get the hell outside. So I went outside. So I went my cigar. had an Advent cigar. And my buddy sent me. Um, so I ended up having an Advent cigar. And people are weird. That car coming in the other direction. She decided to pull over. The other truck had stopped so they could go by. So they wouldn't run me over. This car going that way. Decided to stop. Walking and bug. Yeah. Sometimes you get people that don't give you any leeway and they'll almost run you over. Other people are trying to be kind, which end up delaying everybody. So, yeah. It's like I had a lady that stopped there today. Topic went off. But um, I was going north on my street and then the west eastbound street does not have a stop sign. I do have a stop sign going north. I was stopped, stop sign. She came from the west, stopped, and then waved me on to go. And I'm turning left. I'm like, what the fuck? You don't have to, like, just go. I'm not, because now at this point, if I pull out in front of her, and then she hits me, I'm liable because I had supposed to stop the stop sign. So I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. It seems like an insurance fraud type thing here. So then she seemed all put out and disgusted because she was doing me a favor. You just tell that, like, look, I'm like, go away. Just go away. Just follow the traffic laws and move on with your life. But anyway, so I went ahead, went outside, smoked my cigar, hung out with the dogs, came back in, and basically watched a little bit of TV in the bedroom on the iPad. Got the dogs all placed so they wanted to bed. Doberman was slow to go to sleep he was kind of she was wandering around a little bit and whining and stuff just feeling extra needy Fawn got her to settle down and then i brought the poodle in to stay with us in the bedroom a lot of times poodles sleep in the bed with me that poodle was just like nope i'm sleeping near your mom so the poodle was out there with mom all night so i'm like hey whatever makes the poodle happy i don't care as long as it's happy then i'm good so yeah that's pretty much all i got for right now i will talk to you guys tomorrow have yourself a safe wonderful day thanks for watching